What happened? Well, um, I had been, um, I was out of work trying to find a new way of earning a living. This was in 2007. And kind of in a last ditch effort to find some meaningful work to do, I um, was on my way to Eau Claire to um, um, start a new job. And uh, uh, I was on Highway 29 going to Eau Claire. I uh, had eaten a good breakfast. I had a pillow in case I was tired, because that sometimes happens. And uh, I set out for on, on Highway 29. and. Um, Shortly after, in a while, I, all I can describe it as, I came to. And I looked at the road and I said, I'm going to have an accident. And there's nothing you can do to prevent it. Roads were dry, the sun was out. <clears throat> and, uh, and I did. I went into the ditch in the median. And uh, uh, I understand the car turned around. Um, and there it was. Um, uh, I don't know how much time um, I, uh, I lost consciousness periodically, but I could hear the, um, I couldn't see, I heard the police come, and um, their first question was, were you wearing a seatbelt? And I said, yes, I was wearing my lap belt. So, uh, uh, um, the ambulance came and took me to St. Vincent's, and when I woke up, I was in ICU with two doctors standing over me, telling me about the surgery they had done. Okay, so what day was this? December 17th, 2007. What kind of car were you driving? I was driving a, a prison sedan, a geo prison. What year was that? Uh, it was a 19... I don't remember. Either a 1992 or a 2002. And you do remember... You, I'm sorry, I, the day was... What time of year was it? It was December. December. And you remember the day of the accident. Is that yes. Right? Um, and what you don't remember is perhaps an hour before the accident? Um, no, I think I, I pretty much, well, I, I remember that I was driving and driving carefully and driving under the limit. Um, but we determined later, especially from the weeks before, that I, in all likelihood, I had, had a seizure and lost consciousness than then, because it felt different than, you know, if you're going to fall asleep or whatever. It's like, um, so that's why I say I came to. How far from Green Bay were you? 16 miles. That's what they tell me. You were 15, 20 minutes from where you left? Yes. You left and you didn't hit anything, You but your car went in the, in the ditch and did it roll? Right. Um, yes, it was a one-person, one-car accident. But the car did roll? Yes. And what injuries did you actually suffer? Um, I fractured a vertebrae in my uh, in my neck, which was um, blessedly not uh, minor. I fractured my clavicle, but the main thing was um, I my head went into the windshield on the right side, and that's where my brain injury was. <clears throat> and uh, what what was the nature of the injury? I had a subdural hematoma with a midline shift, and um, so the doctors did, a a after testing, the doctors performed a craniotomy and removed the blood. Now, what does a subdural hematoma with a midline shift mean to you? I, after I was able to, I, in order to be proactive, I, I have gotten all of my hospital records, all of my doctor records. Um, <clears throat> the neurologist later explained that um, uh, something, 
as I understand it, something to sort of hold the brain matter in. There's a, um, a dura mater, which he says is like the hard mother, and it's, a, um, it's like a great big elastic rubber shield around the brain. And <clears throat> so it was a closed head injury. Uh, and so under that dura mater, mater part, I began to bleed. And that shifted your brain from... There was from enough blood that it started to um, shift the right part of my brain towards the left part of my brain. And they did brain surgery? Yes, they did. Was that just to, re to stop the bleed or just to relieve the pressure? Or? Uh, they needed to stop the bleed. And um, I, I never found out, but I imagine there was pressure because of the midline shift. So um, <clears throat> they made an incision. Um, I, I, they told me it was the parietal, right parietal and occipital lobe. So um, my scar looks like a backward question mark. And you were actually conscious after the accident, correct? Um, at least semi-conscious, because I could answer, I could understand the questions, and it took me a long time to answer, but I could answer them. And you remember the instant before the accident, you remember this moment of awareness before your car yes. goes in the ditch? Right. Um, do you remember any of the conversation you had with the, the attendants, or is that just something you've been able to piece together from the records? I heard the police ask me if I was wearing my seatbelt. And you do remember that. I yourself. do remember that. And um, I answered that affirmatively. I was not wearing my um, neck belt. I had two different belts because the car was so old. And that's why I would asked you about the age of the car, because they haven't done, made that kind of... Uh, so I think it was a 1992. Right. I'm a professional singer. I've been a professional singer all my life. And one of the reasons I didn't wear the belt um, over my chest, I'm so short, it really comes across my neck. And if I had had that car accident, um, my trachea would have been crushed. So I, I, in that car, I always just wore my lap belt. And it didn't have airbags. And it didn't have airbags. And 